Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So in today's video, we have a bunch of really interesting stuff I found online, especially related to drones, obviously. So the first one here is called the iFly Taurus, I guess. I'm hoping that's the name and it's called the X8. So what we have here is an eight inch quadcopter with eight motors, two four and one ESCs that's meant to carry almost professional grade camera equipment, which is pretty crazy and stating five to eight minutes, which we could theoretically say three minutes, I think, but it depends on the payload you're actually carrying here. Let's actually take a look at this. Now the price tag is pretty hefty here, especially if you're in Europe where you're gonna have to pay customs after that. So here, if we're looking at it, what we see is again, we have two 80 amp ESCs and by far, th this is not the recommended ESCs I would put on such a build, that's one thing. Another thing is using 2806.5 motors, which is totally fine here. Now the redundancy is true. If a propeller breaks, if a motor breaks, you're good to go. You're, you can still fly, you can still land. Even if one ESC completely blows out, all four of them. However, depending on the type of blow blowout basically if this thing short circuits everything even the signal wires down to the flight controller then you're gonna have a pretty bad day i think uh, but i think it's a very rare case where that actually happens and uh, there could be some safety features some reverse protection but i don't think so uh, you know, so um, it's really nice what they're doing here. And I really like seeing that we're kind of moving a little bit away from the super tiny stuff. But again, this is a bit more expensive. It's out of my budget range. That's for sure. I wouldn't buy this uh, unless I was a real professional doing real professional work. Um, but yeah, it's I, I still find it really interesting. I still would love to get my hands on this frame, though. Uh, that's one thing. So they're using the XX80 amp ESCs. Now, I really do hope it has a lot of filtration on this thing because these are always noisy. And then sometimes, you know, on a build or two, they do some weird shit sometimes if you don't have a low ESR capacitor installed. Um, so, you know, inherently, like out of the box, they're actually pretty noisy. I'm not saying they're bad, but that's just something to keep in mind here. And what's really nice is the integration of the DJI Air unit, since uh, some people will be flying that way. And here we can see that it can do a, a full send. I think this is the lithium ion packs, actually. That's kind of interesting. It seems like it's a low power. What's the KV on this? Did I miss the KV? So it's 1800 KV right here. And um, uh, looking pretty good. I mean, I don't know how well it's going to be because I don't have anything of this nature to test out, but I'm really loving the design. You can see actually uh, the rubber dampeners for the for the camera here. You have you could set up basically a DSLR camera as well, which is really cool. And you could do quite a lot with this since the, the carrying payload is two kilograms. So this doesn't have to be just a camera drone. It could be other things also, maybe for farming, maybe to do some surveillance. Maybe it could do just about almost anything. And uh, I really want to kind of replicate this. Now, I'm really interested in how the hell did they put the motors in together like that? Is it like a standoff in the frame that takes the screws from here, screws from here, and kind of tighten it down? Um, maybe. I mean, that would actually make a lot of sense. But then how the hell are they putting the motor screws in there? So there's a lot of questions to be asked here. <laughs> or it actually seems like maybe they're removable and then you put the motors and you drop that in somehow connect it and tighten it all up. So I'm really curious to see how this thing plays out. I really like how it looks. You have the landing skids. The design is just incredible on this. I mean, uh, it's a bit complicated, but it's, it's actually really nice. So yeah, that's the first thing we have. Let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. Mamba's releasing all-in-ones. I actually got this one and the other one, they're on the way right now. So what they, were able, they weren't able to fit a USB in there. So they give you an adapter you could choose. I think with one of them, you could either choose a USB type C or you can use a, a micro USB. So um, you could do that here. So it is rated up to 25 amps. It's 51 bucks. I don't know the current price um, in the market for all the ones of this nature here. And I'm very curious to see the size. So the size here is the crazy B type board. That's what we see right there. And they are M2 holes, I'm guessing, after you put the rubber dampeners here. Using small FETs, which is to be expected anything like this. Filtration looks pretty decent, actually. Uh, for a 25 amp rated one, I think this is going to do uh, just fine. And uh, we'll get to see that as time goes on. Here we have a, a little step up with a 10 amp plus step up. And here you can actually choose if you want... Uh, internal or external USB. Oh, that's pretty interesting. What's the difference? Oh, okay. But why the hell did they do that? I don't know. Anyway, you could decide if you want an internal or external. Saves a bit of weight, I guess. But it could also be pretty annoying. And it also could be pretty useful. If you could want to route that, if you wanted to route that somewhere else, that could be pretty useful depending on your build. If you have some crazy super light build, you can make it even detachable. So 
it's kind of nice. I mean, you could see it in both ways here. So it's an F7, 35 amp Beale Heli S ESCs. And again, it's a, t it's a crazy B type board. No nine volt regulator, which is kind of a letdown for me. I really like the nine volt regulators on almost anything. Two to six S voltage input. So it's rated up to six S, which is really nice. Now, Eosheen, they're stepping into the AIO market. And this honestly seems like a, what is it called? JHMCU. You know that company. I forgot what it was called. But it does look like it's their design. It carries the same font style and same characteristics here. Uh, I could be wrong, but it could be just a rebranded from one of those. They're okay, I guess. I, you know, they have their hits and misses. They're still not a super well-known, reliable company. But uh, we see we have a 10-volt regulator, which is kind of nice, actually. Uh, but hopefully, uh, it's good as well. You know, the only thing really with these that could go bad is the noise and the ESC timing. Because everything else is basically identical to everything else. You know, there's no company using fake ARM chips. They're all using the same exact ARM chip. They're all using the same exact software. So just going to come down here to the timing of the ESC and how well it was built and the FETs. That's all it's going to come down to. And if the, if the timing is wrong, then that's the root of all problems. And I've actually been researching this quite often now or recently and have come up with a couple pretty interesting ideas and, and theories. However, I'm still in the middle of actually researching this and actually having the proper data so I can relay that information back to you. So this one looks pretty good uh, for how much? 65 bucks, 25 amps with a 10 volt. So what you're really paying for more here than the Mumbas is the 9 volt. Uh, that's really it. The amperage is the same, but oh, you're also getting BHL32 ESCs. So it might be a little bit heavier because those chips are slightly larger. This one here, I'm still waiting to get my hands on it. I have, I've seen this quite often, but I haven't even used it. So this is the F405 for 40 bucks. It comes with a nine volt, which is really nice. 16 megabytes flash memory, takes raw battery voltage up to 6S, and it has Wi-Fi and probably Bluetooth. I don't know what it has exactly, but it seems to be. So currently I'm guessing it's going to be Bluetooth, but I could be wrong as well. Um, this kind of does look like a tiny Bluetooth antenna here. But yeah, again, I could be wrong. What's really nice with the Mambas here is that they always add the extra safety feature, like a TVS uh, protection diode, which is a transient vol voltage suppression. So if there's a huge voltage spike coming into the flight controller, it'll suppress it. And also a uh, reverse po polarity. If that's going in, maybe the diode might go out first or it might not even go out. So that's kind of nice here to keep in mind. We also do have a 9 volt, 3 amp, 5 volt, 3 amp, and 3.3 uh, volt. Uh, usually 3.3 volts are obviously for the flight controller gyro and the on-screen display depending on which on-screen display they've used yeah they do so we can see we do have the on-screen display and on the bottom is basically where most of the regulators lie here's the tvs diode here we have the memory right there really nice design 37 bucks i i think is a good deal honestly so here's mumba kind of i think copying what um iFlight did so here we have another eight inch huge ass quadcopter frame that's meant to carry something pretty big, obviously a camera here. However, um, this one has a lot of 3D printed parts, I think. Yeah, so the legs are 3D printed and um, it's really hard to see what it's doing here, but I kind of like the design. We see the legs, so the battery would go down here, the camera up here. That's a pretty big platform right there huge arms like humongous arms here so it's overall it's going to be rigid and i'm guessing it could possibly fit two motors but how the hell do they put these two motors in together that, that just, I, I don't know i don't understand maybe i'm missing something maybe there's an adapter or maybe there's a, a, a way to do it i've never even looked into it actually so i have no idea if anybody knows link down below whatever you think and by the way everything here is linked down below so it's pretty nice i'd like to try it do something with it at least because these are pretty thick arms so next we have the iFlight full send a pretty expensive battery but it's a lithium ion 3000 milliamp 6s lipo oh lithium ion sorry not lipo and uh, these are 76 bucks and we can see the rating is 15 to 30 c uh, which is decent for not a heavy demanding uh, success quadcopter Here's another one, 6S also, but this one is a 6,000 milliamp for your super long range stuff. And here we can see that it's a 6S and uh, two of them actually in parallel. So that's how you get a bit more milliamp out of that. Uh, I should theoretically also get more amp draw out of that as well. So this here is kind of interesting. The only reason I looked for this is because I recently got this in the mail. 
And I was like, okay, what do they do different? They actually haven't done anything different. It's still the old stock one with a couple modifications, uh, very little modifications, which we're going to be taking a look at. It's called the Ultimate Beginner Drone Setup. The one I got comes with the controller uh, and actually a battery. So we're going to be taking a look at that and see if it's any good. So this one here, I really like this, but I still haven't been able to get my hands on it. I'm still trying to get my hands on one. I really like the ball aspect and the protection aspect here. So that's really cool. Um, so let's go ahead and see what's next. Uh, this one I put here because this is really interesting. This is a six inch frame for 31 bucks and it's a really good, decent six inch frame. Um, so if anybody's looking for a budget or looking into building something, this would be pretty good if you're looking for a six inch and you're on a budget, you can't go wrong with this. Next, this one looked nice just because of the price and I hope it is not a clone of something currently in the market, but if it is, I do apologize for that. But we can see it's a five inch DJI compatible frame here, 3K. And if we take a look at the arm size, arm thickness is five millimeters, which is totally acceptable, even if it's a piece of shit carbon. Um, but we do have a lot of sharp edges here and yeah, we have some 3D printed parts, so that's kind of nice. So this is kind of cool, but the style is kind of fading away now with the whole camera mount thing. I wish it was just a flat one right there and then we just put our own 3D printed uh, camera mount. This one here, now I really want to get, but I'm afraid that it, this might be a clone of kebab, one of kebab's frames, I'm not sure. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but it does overall seem like a nice kit. That's if it's not a clone. Um, 155 bucks for a super ultra white with 2004 motors from what is this diatone I think so this kit looks pretty cool and uh, it's running uh, 2004 motors with a 1700 kV 6s uh, they are T motors and with an all-in-one 20 amp GEP RC flight controller so all you're missing is the camera receiver and video transmitter for this setup uh, and that's about it here really uh, so yeah I'd like to check this out and um, yeah, hopefully build it on the channel. We have a build up coming very soon. This one I couldn't understand for the life of me. Is it watching three channels at once or is it just a Triversity receiver that's storing uh, footage or outputting footage? Uh, if anybody knows, let me know down in the comment section. Looks pretty cheap, but I don't know how many people would actually use this. So uh, let me know down in the comment section. Also, AKK is, I think, trying to come back into the game. We have a new video transmitter. Hopefully, so I haven't seen anything from them in a while the ultra long range video transmitter that has a fan and it goes up to 3000 milliwatts. Now, is this true? Don't know, but we could roughly safely assume 1500 milliwatt output power. This is hopefully worst case scenario with this setup. Obviously, this is gonna take a bit more uh, power, uh, draw a bit more power, so you wouldn't wanna probably put this on a normal five inch build, maybe one of those eight inch builds that we saw, or maybe a seven inch or something, something that could actually accommodate this. It's not that big, but it's pretty big and it's going to take quite a bit of uh, power, especially with the fan and obviously the output power here. And it doesn't even have a five volt regulator and it takes eight to 28 volts, which is kind of nice, but they suggest at least a 2S battery if you want to just power this basically separately from your flight controller. Uh, so it's saying you could get around 10 kilometers of range pretty nice and um, uh, hopefully somebody will test that out there because I don't have the place to test that and yeah well that's really it guys I really hope you guys enjoyed the video if there's a build upcoming make sure you stay tuned and also everything's linked down below if you check those out it's a greatly support the channel and come join my patreon there's gonna be a lot of awesome cool new things in the upcoming month and well I'll see you guys in the next one peace